<laughs> you are, Steph. You are, Steph. Oh, there you go. Rookie mistake there. Got to turn down the phone. Sorry for the echo. You guys hear me okay? Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the key there, Steph, is that it's um, – this is the uh, this is the best time of year, honestly. Um, like, actually, maybe like a couple weeks ago, we had um, the uh, flowers are blossoming on the cherry or whatever the dogwood tree, and um, it's it's really the next couple weeks are like the best time of year for the yard. Um, and if you were to actually go and look at it up close, you'd see a lot of weeds and stuff. So it just it looks nice from far away. <laughs> when it's cut, it looks good, but otherwise, it's. Uh, um, yeah, is what it is. Once we get into like, you know, July, August, we get, uh, I don't, we don't water the lawn. It's such a big lawn. It's, uh, it's too much of a pain to try to water. So there you go. I didn't know. I wasn't sure if Skip was going to be on today. Cause you said he was, uh, going to be offshore. So I'm glad he's back. Quick trip then. Ooh, Kurt. Welcome. dog I'm gonna try to keep up here actually I haven't done a live stream in quite a long time I will see how much uh oh Steph got uh that's what you were talking about on Donald's live stream Steph okay hey Donald and Boris Texas Piper and Paul Todd, was that the uh, number one staff or number two? <laughs> Probably not the right way to put it, huh? <laughs> hey, Jeff, good to see you. Okay. Yeah, you know what, Steph? Um, interestingly for me, I had the uh, Pfizer vaccine. I just got the second shot in, uh, on mo last Monday. And thankfully, I actually didn't have any any uh, side effects at all, other than a sore arm. But the first one, actually, my arm was much was much more sore than the second one. I don't know if that's is what it is, but um, hey, Daniel, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. I got to thank Donald too for uh, for helping uh, with the tailgate, and that was awesome. All right, my P John, thanks for joining. John did a nice VR for me, as did a few others. Let's see, how do you know it's, it, okay. I gotta get used to the live, you know, it's actually really strange guys, when, you, when you're really just used to attending live streams, um, you, you're, you're used to hearing someone talking, right? And it's very odd when you're kind of, when you're doing the live stream and it's not like a Zoom or something where you got other people, it's, uh, it just feels a little strange when you're not hearing anybody talk back to you. <laughs> Let my Cameron go. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Paul, congrats on that. Little Piper, welcome. <laughs> yeah, I know. You want, I got to do the, what is up, YouTube? <laughs> what, TPC? Does that make you feel better, uh, Kurt? I loved your VR, Kurt. You did a good job. The uh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, <clears throat> you can ask any questions you want, Daniel. I'm happy. I, I'm the only the only difference in my live stream, Daniel, is you're not talking to uh, someone with um, any real experience like you are when you're talking to Mike at Briar Blues or Simon and those guys. But I'm happy to answer uh, anything that I can. Um, one sec, I'll answer that for you, Daniel. Um, thanks, Donald. <clears throat> um, reverse calabash pipes. Uh, I don't have any, actually, Daniel. Um, I've tried, you know, I'm, so I, I guess I should, I should say I really have never smoked a true reverse calabash, so I really can't tell you. I know people kind of are on the fence over whether they think they actually do anything or not. Um, I have tried, you know, Mike at Briar Blues tried, had, 
told me to try taking the filter out of one of the nine millimeter pipes I had from him and see if that acted like a reverse calabash. I mean, and for me, it didn't really make much of a difference, but it's not, a, that wasn't a true reverse calabash though. Um, rusticated pipes, I love rusticated pipes, um, especially, uh, obviously the Costello Sea Rocks, I really enjoy. Um, for me though, like a sandblast with a black sandblast pipe with uh, like a silver ring tops for me. Um, though, thanks to Kurt, uh, watch my pipe. I think he's really putting me in a bad place now because he's got me looking at Ladoons and Aristocratic, Aristocratic, Aristocraticas, and all sorts of pipes I shouldn't be looking at from Costello because they, they are in a price range I don't want to go to. So thanks a lot, Kurt, for that. <laughs> I do like smooth finishes too, Daniel. I mean, like uh, I've got a couple, I've got a couple pipes here, guys, for the session here today, and uh, this is a Eric Weaver Sea Smokes pipe which I'm going to smoke in a little bit. Um, and unfortunately the lighting here isn't great, but you're not really seeing how nice the grains are on this thing, but this is a really pretty smooth pipe. Yeah. Thanks Kurt. So we got 17 in the house here, which is great. Thanks for joining guys and girls and gals. Um, we're going to probably wait. Maybe I figured we'd wait maybe uh, till like 10, 15 minutes in. Maybe we'll see how the, the numbers go if we keep going up we'll wait till maybe 15 minutes in or so um you know or 12 20 i don't know figure it out and see how it's going and then we'll, we'll start doing the drawings for the uh uh for the giveaway so i got got all the prizes here to give away and i got some extras so if you guys stick around in the live stream after we do the uh top three prizes uh anybody that's in here i've got a few more things to give away for you guys so i thought that'd be fun uh thank everybody for showing up today so we'll definitely uh do that um, peace man pipe peace pipe man thanks for joining um oh my goodness gabe is in the house tallest piper man wow thank you for ju jumping in uh, it's uh definitely been a long time good to see you good here hope you're doing well um just got out doing some fly fishing a couple weeks ago gabe and uh first time in over a year that i'd uh, gotten my fly rod uh out and dusted the rust off it was uh really nice <laughs> Swag. Yeah, I got my Jay Mouton shirt on today, so I wanted to rep represent. Although, right now, I guess uh, I'm smoking my uh, corn little uh, little ants, and uh, in it, I've got some uh, Warhorse Bar. I don't know if you guys, anybody's uh, had that Warhorse Bar, but uh, the red. Someone sent me a sample of it um, a couple months ago. And I kind of fell in love with it, actually. Um, and I think it's a blend that a lot of people don't like. But um, for me, it's actually pretty awesome aromatic. Um, I know it's a remake of an old um, Ireland-made blend that they don't make anymore in Ireland. And Russellette started making it. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's an acquired taste, though. I will say you really – it's got a really funky tin note. When you smell it, it's got that, like, fragrant, soapy, vanilla – um, you know, really strong kind of soapy tin note, which can kind of make you scared. But then when you actually light it up after the first charring light, it kind of goes away and you really get this really nice uh, Tonkin bean. It's got that like 1792 flake Tonkin bean flavor mixed in with some floral, not Lakeland, but like florally essence. And so I know it sounds kind of funky, but once you kind of get smoking through the first third of it, it's just got this awesome like burly... Virginia vanilla note to it and the the smoke I mean, not necessarily the retrohale but just the smoke that comes off of the pipe the, the room note I guess I love it it's like this awesome pure tobacco room note though it's not like a super sweet aromatic so hey swaggy man piper thanks for joining Daniel let's see Yeah. Um, talking about why they rusticate, Daniel. I mean, I'm, you know, I think there's a lot of like, it depends on where you are in the spectrum, I think, and what you're, you know, what you're, what you're trying to go for. For me, when I find pits in the pipes, if it's like one or two pits, as long as they're not super deep, um, I actually don't mind leaving them and kind of 
you know, leaving smooth areas and maybe rusticating other sections. But there's people that hate that, that want either all rusticated or all smooth. And there's a lot of carvers that, you know, I guess they consider if you've got pits in your pipe, it's considered, you know, that that's, that's a faux pas or something. I don't know, but you don't see like the high end carvers leaving a lot of pits in their pipes. Um, what I will say is if you look at Ashton's, even the Ashton clears, um, you will actually find uh, pits in those pipes and they're not cheap pipes. Um, so the one thing I will say is that when you're spending more money for a smooth pipe, it is kind of a turnoff if you're seeing, you know, a lot of pits. I mean, I don't mind them in a smooth pipe, but I don't like when I'm having to pay a lot extra for a smooth pipe if it's got, you know, pits in it. So, all right, who am I missing? Hey, Mike, Camera Piper. Wow, Mike in the house. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate you joining. Sharon Adams. Hmm. All right. Let's see, who else is in the house? There you go, Peace Pipe Man. Hobbiton Piper, thanks for joining. Skip in the house. All right, I'm gonna light, I'm talking too much here. No worries, Daniel, thanks for asking. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have a lot to talk about here. Let's see if I missed anything. I'm new to the live thing here, so I could have missed something. I didn't know uh, didn't know Paul was going to join us. I was going to just by default make him a moderator just because it seems like, Paul, that's uh, – <laughs> I didn't know if you charge a fee for your uh, moderation uh, job that you do for everybody on the uh, YouTube community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Donald. Hey, Frank. Thanks for joining, man. Love your Instagram uh, post, by the way, Frank. You got some uh, great posts. What's everybody? Uh, we got twenty-eight in the house now. That's a that's good for me. Yeah, Mike. No doubt, Paul does an awesome job. All the live streams I'm on. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Um, if you guys don't know, you always see this view from me, but um, I actually live across the street from a very old general store. It's been here for over a hundred years, and um, you know, the, the good of it is that you can easily just walk across the street when you need a coffee or a uh, pork roll. As those of us in New Jersey, if you know what pork roll is, if you've been drinking, if you've had a letter rip Friday night and, uh, you know, you need you need that extra grease to kind of soak things up and get you going in the morning. Being across from a general store is a good thing for that pork roll, egg and cheese, um, which I guess is a very New Jersey thing. But uh, we love it here. And anyway, the bad of it is that you get. I get a lot of traffic and motorcycles and everything else coming and going. So it's uh, something you just got to deal with and deliveries at like four in the morning, which we've kind of gotten accustomed to. Ooh, it's CND Cordial, Daniel. I haven't tried that one yet. Um, although I think I saw a professor uh, talk about it in one of his uh, Smoke Every Blend episodes and it seemed like it was pretty good. It sounded good. Pork roll and Scrapple, the best use of pork. <laughs> Scrapple is, you know, Mike, I've told, I've mentioned to you. Um, yeah, I, I used to go to Allentown, Pennsylvania every week for a law, law part of my life. I was out there every week and the guys out there, uh, you know, introduced me to Scrapple and yeah, it's a, it's a unique breakfast choice. Yeah, that's right. Donald Wawa is, uh, uh, I call Wawa like the new 7-Eleven, right? We had this interesting, uh, if you go to like when we were kids, it was 7-Eleven, right? You rode your bike to 7-Eleven and got a Slurpee or whatever. Now, like it changed over to like Quick Check and now like Wawa and now it's everything's Wawa. We have a couple Wawas, you know, maybe down the street. So that's a classic one, Daniel. So, Mike, uh, real quick, I was thinking uh, the weather is gorgeous today. I'm thinking maybe tomorrow I might try to get back out and do some more fishing. Um, there's actually every – right in the springtime for me, um, there's a pond down the road from my house, which I need to do a video of because my, uh, my 
in-laws were actually farmers and they owned a good part of land, like five, about five miles from our house here and a beautiful pot, plot of land. And the state actually made them sell it to build a reservoir. So the good news is that it's all, you know, it's not developed, it's all still there and it's pristine, but they have a few ponds on there. And one of them has got some, it's stocked with trout, but I go in the spring just to catch bluegills and sunnies. And I bring like a little three weight, lightweight, you know, uh, seven foot fly rod and just cast little like caddis, caddis top water stuff and just catch bluegills. And it, it makes you feel like a kid uh, again when you do that kind of stuff. So, all right, Paul, let me try to do that if I can. Click your name. Oh, I got it. I got you, Paul, head moderator. There you go. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Boris, I'll tell you what, I know if you weren't so far, if you weren't so far away, Boris, uh, I'd happily send you a log of pork roll. It, it comes in a log. You, well, you can get it in a little box that was sl like sliced up like tail, like you might be familiar with Canadian bacon, but um, you normally get it in this giant log that's wrapped in, uh, it's got a casing around it and it's, it's uh, in um, a sack, like a, what is it? Uh, uh, it's an interesting uh, packaging. And then you just kind of cut it up yourself. Yeah. All right, Mike. I mean, it's, you know, it's like nonstop fun. And they have some really nice bluegills. They're gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I don't keep them. I know some people, you know, eat panfish, which that's fine. But I don't keep them. I just throw them back. But, um, you know, I've that's my go-to. When I want to just go and have a, have a fun time and not think about it. And, um, you know, it's just like I said, it makes you feel like a kid. I, I've actually, whenever I want to. If, I'm, if any friends come and they have kids and, and it's this time of year and we want to take them fishing, I'll take them there and I know they're going to catch fish and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's just practice, Donald. I mean, it's, you know, nothing else like anything. That's right. We got the wrench in the house now. Paul is the man. I should have surprised him and just made him a moderator ahead of time. I mean, <laughs> if I knew he was going to show. Um, let's see. Well, so I won't, hopefully we won't bore you guys too much with, we'll get to the giveaway in a few minutes here with, uh, talking about fishing. Cause I could do it a lot. Um, but, uh, the, um, yeah, <laughs> nice try, Kurt. <laughs> I do have, when you type dash tins, Kurt, it just shows up like this. That's all I got. So, um, Oh, I'll tell you guys the finger story in a second. Um, Steph noticed it. I was going to point it out. Um, so uh, I was going to say, Daniel, you asked about boats. I used to have a boat. Um, I've actually, I love fishing off a boat. Um, I actually used to fish. I, I like bass, freshwater bass fishing. I used to fish the New Jersey FLW tour for a couple of years. Um, not seriously, but just for fun with a buddy who had a boat. Um, and that's a totally different kind of fishing because it's, you know, people are trying to catch fish for, you know, contest and stuff, which I was didn't really enjoy. There's the uh, motorcycles. So, um, but I, I love boat fishing, uh, Donald. I mean, I think uh, in the ocean, I fish, you know, I used to have a boat. My buddies have boats and I love being on the water. Uh, so that's probably my favorite. Although, you know, I, I think uh, it's a tough, it's a toss up between that and being in like a remote river. Like if I can do like a hike in, like in Colorado, I used to go visit a friend and we'd hike, uh, hike somewhere to a remote river or lake and just fish for, you know, um, brookies or something. And again, that's, that's just a ton of fun. Um, so Steph, um, Hey Sam, welcome. Gamecock Piper, Mike, thanks for joining. Let's see if I missed anybody here. Going to get more motorcycles coming through. Um, so my finger, this, uh, um, Mike, Mike will appreciate this. I'm not sure if we have, I don't think we have anybody else in the house. I'm sure we have other woodworkers. So Mike, this is what you, what happens when you do not respect the wood lathe. Um, I, uh, um, actually was working on pipe number 19 last week and the, uh, 
I was doing a long shank and I had the, uh, the guide um, up real close to the shank and I just was stupid. It was, you know, moving 1200 RPMs or whatever. And, and I was just checking to see if it was, you know, if I had missed, if I had gotten it smooth enough and I just wasn't paying attention and put my finger where it shouldn't. And it, I got really lucky. Just the tip of it got caught and, and yanked and uh, wedged. And um, without going into too many details, it, it, it sheared through the nail. And, and I got really lucky because it, it didn't break anything. I just it got really bloody and nasty and all that good stuff. But um, I learned my lesson. Respect your lathe. Respect your woodworking equipment at all times. And um, watch where your hand is. And I guess uh, it probably happens to everybody at some point sooner or later. So I'm not going to complain. I'm going to say that I'm lucky that it, it wasn't any worse than that. So there you go, Steph. <laughs> that's my that's my Mr. Puppet story, as my wife calls it now. <laughs> yeah, Mike, it was not enjoyable. And it's still, it's still pretty bad. It, I, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> I think I need to draw like a little face on it and, you know put something on it, but, um, Hey, Yanez, thanks for joining. Awesome. So glad you could join. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, no worries. Hey, OWP. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, like I said, it could have been a lot worse. I get that, Mike. I tell you what's been weird, Mike, um, is, you know, I work on a computer too, right, all day. And so it's been very painful all week um, trying to type, you know, without this finger. Uh, it's made my life pretty slow. You know? <laughs> yeah, Donald. That was a good one. That'd be a good intro. Just do a little YouTube intro with. <laughs> oh, God. Steph, ouch. <laughs> yeah. We could get Steph, you know. Steph can make little finger puppets that we can, you know, put on so you don't see the gnarled finger that <laughs> that's left. Um, I do, Donald. Um. You know, oddly enough, though, I'm drinking water right now just because it's kind of it's it's noon and I was on Martin's live stream last night doing some uh, drinking with him. Uh, so I probably am giving it a little break right now. Um, but uh, I I actually really honestly mostly drink green tea when I'm smoking my pipes. Um, uh, but at night uh, or with a nice uh, English blend, I do like a scotch, a whiskey. Um if my favorite drink is uh, Jack and Coke. I mean, I, I, I just found that it, I love it. And it's kind of one of those things where, um, hey, Sandro, thanks for joining. Um, I'm sure you guys, you know how you go through this thing in your life, right? Where when you're younger, it's you trying all sorts of things to figure out what your drink is. And you don't know what, you know, I just wanted, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, I, I had never really found what I really enjoyed. And then I just started drinking Jack Daniels. Um, and Jack and Cokes. And I found like, you know what, no matter where I go, I'm out, I can drink a Jack and Coke. You don't have to worry about finding it. Everybody's got it. It's uh, you know, it's a pretty, and if I'm out with friends late, you know, out late night or whatever, I find that I can drink Jack and Coke um, throughout the night. And it doesn't bother me as bad as like, I just can't drink beer after beer after beer for me. So Sandro, uh, call, wow, you're joining from Milan. That is awesome, Sandro. I need to, uh, I really need to get back to Italy. I've never been to Milan. Um, I got to go to uh, Venice and Florence and um, yeah, that's it. Um, but I would love to go to um, really to Milan, but really more to, I'm trying to convince Mike to do, to do like a pipe makers uh, tour, right? And uh, I think that would be awesome. So <laughs> I was thinking that, Kurt, you know, I was going to, we'll see, you know, maybe if I get enough uh, encouragement, I'll have to go inside and grab a, uh, and grab a, grab something to celebrate. I got some, uh, some whiskey I could probably pour. Um, I'm with you, Boris, you know, that's one of those things where, um, 
whiskey for me, it depends on the type. Um, I don't usually drink Jack Daniels neat. I usually drink it with some ice. Um, but I know like for the better stuff when I'm drinking, most of my scotches or whiskeys, I'll drink um, just straight up neat um, or with a drop of water. Ooh, that's a good suggestion, Hobbit. And you know what? It's funny you say that because I ran out of Jack last night um, and I actually have some makers. Um, makers 46, I think. Is that what it is? And I actually probably shouldn't have put Coke in that because it's a it's a nice, you know, <laughs> to drink it by itself. Um, but I did. And it was uh, it was very good. Lagavulin. OK, um, I like Lagavulin. Uh, I drink a lot of Laphroaig. Um, I like PD stuff. Um, so Port Charlotte, um, all that stuff from ILA. I really want to go to ILA someday. You know, that'd be nice. Jameson's, uh, Sam. Awesome. I mean, that's good stuff too. Actually, when we, we got to go to Ireland, uh, grateful, we took my wife's family, uh, who had never been there and they're from there, um, a couple of years ago before the pandemic. And, um, we had a great time and tried Jameson's and Ginger for the first time. That was awesome. So we got to do the Jameson's tour and learn all about the Jameson's. We did the Guinness tour too. That was really cool. Um, so I'm going to do my, Hey, Tony, thanks for joining. Awesome. Well, we're almost at the half hour mark. So I think we better start giving some stuff away here. We're at 30. That's, that's pretty good. What's everybody smoking? You guys got to sound off and let me know. I'm curious. Our bag 10 is awesome, Boris. And for the price, that is that is fantastic. Someone recommended that to me and I tried it and I really enjoy it. Yes. Sandro, that is an absolutely fantastic idea. Yanez, we can maybe we can buy our way in. Um, vodka with pipes, Daniel. I assume you mean, um, uh, barbacoa. Let me come back to that one, Texas Piper. Um, I assume you mean, uh, cleaning pipes, Daniel, um, or do you mean drinking? Uh, I don't drink much vodka in general, so I'm not a big vodka guy. I used to love absolute Mandarin. That was my drink of choice with tonic, um, when I was younger. The, uh, I do clean my pipes with, uh, Everclear though. And that's an interesting one because if you ever go to the liquor store and you're that guy that's buying like the giant bottle of Everclear, I feel like I need to tell the guy it's for cleaning my pipes because <laughs> they give you this look like, okay. <laughs> hey, Giannis, if, if we just have to bribe you with a pipe to get into the cellar, that's a done deal. <laughs> Nice OWP. I like 965. That's a great option. My uh, One of my first pipes was that Peterson Iran 606, which I should have brought out today. Um, and I smoked uh, early morning pipe in it. But uh, I love that pipe. That's a fantastic pipe. Ooh, nice YP, John. Special lot of Kia flakes. Great. Um, Simon gifted me some, <clears throat> and I have, I think, with a couple of years of age on it. And I kind of been slowly smoking that. And I really enjoy it. It's good stuff. I'm kind of like onion, you know, I'm not, I think uh, you don't find, I don't find too many tobaccos that I don't like. Um, other than I'm not a big, you know, super sweet aromatic guy. <clears throat> and even 1Q, I, I, you know, it's like sacrilege to say, but I, I, I don't not like 1Q. But when I smoke it, I just don't get like I'd rather smoke vanilla custard or even creme brulee or molta dolce versus one Q for me, they have more flavor, but um, that's just me. Ooh, Stokeby's Norwegian blend in Anira. That sounds awesome, Mike. I don't think I've even seen that blend. Um, the, uh, I was gonna say one thing, Mike, I don't know if you guys have, have tried it, um, I didn't get to do a video on kind of like the end of last year. I was going to do an end of year one that was like kind of my surprise blends for the year. And one of the ones that was on my list was the um, Stokeby's 401 Natural Dutch and Cavendish. And it's, I mean, it's not like a 
you got to run out and buy a blend. But I'll tell you what, if you're looking for just like an everyday, nice Virginia blend with nice kind of honey, vanilla, not super sweet, really subtle. Um, it's, it's a great, like when I don't know what else I want to smoke, I'll use that. And when I'm breaking in pipes, I actually like to break in pipes with that blend too. Um, yeah, Tony, exactly. Me too. All right, guys, let me, um, I'm not going to keep my pipe lit when I keep talking like this. I'm actually going to switch pipes here and then we're going to do this giveaway, uh, get the giveaway going. I know you're waiting for that. Um, I've got, uh, I'm like Mike, I came loaded and ready to go. I got my little Ashton here. And um, in this Ashton, I actually have um, some, I'm going to give a plug here for Park Lane Tobacconist. Um, this is their Connoisseur Flake. And uh, it's a really, really nice blend. Um, they, Park Lane's having their huge estate sale today. So unfortunately I'm not there. Um, they changed the date on it and I couldn't go this weekend, um, which I'm happy to be here with you guys. But um, they have like a massive estate sale going today, which, uh, I'm going to try to get there. Maybe next, the next time I go to Vermont, I always hit that place on the way up or back. So I'll have to try to do that. Um, I'm not paying attention to the autumn evening. So Gabe, I'm with you on that one. Um, I need to probably learn how to smoke autumn evening because I've only smoked it a few times. I know it's a well-loved blend. The tin notes awesome, but it just didn't do it for me. Um, I got to try it again. Um, oh yeah, we got a 30 minute warning for Steph and Skip, right? I forgot. We got to get this rolling. Um, good, good point, Kurt. Um, thank you. Let's get going. All right. So we got, uh, excuse me for not paying attention to the uh, comments here. Hey, no worries, Sam. I should have, I'm sorry, Sam. I should have put you in anyway. Um, if I had, I, you know, I was so crazy with work the last couple of weeks that I literally was putting this together. As you guys saw, I, I didn't get to do like a, you know, check your name off on the list kind of um, video. Um, I do think I scoured everything I could to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Anybody that said I'm in, I put on the list. If you didn't say I'm in, then I didn't put you down. Um, and I checked, I think I got all the VRs. So it was three um, three entries for a VR and one entry for an I'm in. Um, I got VRs. So I'll show you guys a list here. See if this uh, can make that out. So, um, I got BRs from, let's see, Jorge416, London Calling, Simon, Watch My Pipe, Let My Cameron Go, YP John, Scott at 16th Day, OWP, Flat Map Piper, Armchair Piper, Steph, Skip, and yeah, and that's it. And then, um, and thank you, Steph and Skip. I know you guys were under some pressure, so I really appreciate you doing that. You didn't have to, um, but I, I appreciate you doing it. Um, it's a good list, Donald. Um, we got, uh, I didn't, uh, I forgot to write down the total number. Um, but, uh, what I can tell you is, uh, again, the VRs had three each, so that kind of bumps it up. Right. But it's, uh, 110 entries total. And what I did was I put them all into Excel and I did a random number thing, uh, so that it wasn't just one through 110. Cause I think sometimes I don't know people, maybe it helps people get stuck at the low numbers and they feel like those numbers never come up. So I randomized the numbers um, and uh, everybody's got a random number assigned to your name. And I guess at the end, I'll take a picture and post it at the end or something um, at some point. I don't know if people are interested to make sure I didn't miss anybody, but I think I got everybody. Um, so we got entries from all over um, and I really appreciate it. And before I do this, let me just say, um, hey, Steve, dude, Rustica, thanks for joining. Um, let me just say thank you to everybody, uh, to all my subscribers. I really want to, um, I really need to just uh, say that uh, uh, for me, um, like I think a lot of you, the YouTube community, I mean, I've only been a member for three years, but uh, I've made friends that um, are really, really true friends. And 
this pandemic for me, I work from home. I used to travel almost every week. I haven't traveled in over a year and a half. Um, so getting to get on Zooms and get on lives has been my main way to interact with people, um, other than obviously my close family and friends around here. Um, but uh, I'm really blessed. So thank you guys. Really, really, um, really blessed. Um, all right. Enough of that. Let's get to the drawing. So what do you guys want to do first? Do you want to do the first prize first or the third prize first? Which way should we go? Let me know. Three, two, one. I got one vote. Okay. Sam's saying three, two, one. Anybody else? Otherwise, we're going with Sam's. All right. Sam, you're the guest of honor. You set the tone. Everybody, everybody agrees. So let's do this thing. I got a, got my pen here. I'm going to try to write with so I can keep track of who won. We should have got like a garbage man Piper to do this, right? Because he does it really well. Um, my boy, Mel. All right, I'm going to get the random number generator here. So just a reminder, let me get the prizes. All right, so third, third, third place prize is going to be this uh, Dagner koozie with a unsmoked Dagner corn cob, Missouri Meerschaum corn cob. All right, and uh, with this, whoever wins this, um, I'm going to send you also some surprise tobacco. If you, when you send me your uh, email and info, let me know what your favorite types of tobacco are. I will include some samples for you as well. So let's go ahead and do this one. See if I can get this right. Should have prepared the random number generator. Uh oh, we'll get there. We're going to be rushing at the end, so we don't overstep uh, Steph and Skip here. And um, all right, here we go. So we got the random number generator there, which I think you guys can see. We're gonna go one to 110. Just make sure that's right. Yeah. All right. One to 110. You guys can see, hopefully, 110, and let's do it. Ready? Drum roll, please. All right. 10. And the winner, prize number three. Dropping stuff all over the place here. I tell I don't do this often. Number 10. All right, Cyrus Shaw, there you go. Congrats, Cyrus. I don't think I know know you, Cyrus, so um, congrats, so thanks for entering. And uh, I'll leave my email address in the bucket. Uh, make sure you um, send me an email with your information and uh, there you go. Let me make sure I write this down. Third prize. All right. Second place is going to be, all right, second place prize is going to be this beautiful brand new Savinelli Series 3. This is a, uh, this is the pot. And let me tell you guys, this is super light. I love this pipe. Um, the saddle bit, everything about this pipe is awesome for me. Saddle bit, clenchable, going to color up beautifully, um, great great for burleys and aromatics and anything you want to smoke in it. Um, and this is a nine millimeter. So if you guys, I, I, I did get some, uh, converters, I think. 
So I will include a converter with this if you want one. Um, but um, there you go. So that end, of course, it will also come with the tin of the good old brand new original frog on a log unopened. This is from 2010. So you got 11 years of age on this. Um, so good luck. And if you guys, whoever wins this, if they don't like that, let me know and we'll, we'll switch it up. All right, we're gonna do it again. And if you won once already, you can't win again, sorry. All right. 44. All right, let's see who the winner is. Forty-four. We'll get there. Why can I not find forty-four? Huh. There are too many names on here. Oh, there we go. Okay, forty-four. Patrick Mullahan. See that? Patrick Mullahan. So congratulations, Patrick. It is second prize. And for some reason, guys, if I don't hear back from folks, they'll give them a couple weeks to respond. If not, we'll draw again. Hopefully they will. Again, Patrick, congratulations. Get back to me. All right. Keep this rolling. Moving along well now. Here's what you guys have been waiting for. First place prize is... The beautiful K. Woody 100 year anniversary pipe. This is a big pipe. Comes with the certificate of authenticity. There you go. Give you a look at it. Dublin. It's uh, sandblasted. And uh, it's got the K. Woody 100 year mark on it. And it is number two of 20. So some cool history there, even if you don't want to smoke it. A nice one for the collection and with it will come a brand new tin of McClellan 40th anniversary this one's a open one already but you'll get an unopened tin and if the winner doesn't like 40th anniversary uh, let me know and we'll connect something that's just as nice from my seller uh, I'm fine with that I'd rather have you get something you want to smoke than uh, something you don't all right here we go. So, and oh no, try again. Seventy nine. I can I can fix that for you, Sam. Uh, all right. Here's someone I know. I don't think he's on though. 79 is Flat Map Piper. Flat Map Piper. Congratulations. All right. Well done. So, Flat Map Piper. Interesting. Well, awesome. Um, congratulations again, all you guys have won. Um, I got some other stuff here that I want to give away. So, um, I'm going to do that real quick. So again, we don't step on stuff and skip, um, and I'm going to try to find a good way to do this. So why don't we do it this way? Um, thank you, OWP. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, <laughs> everybody will say that to flat map Piper. Um, I think flat map Piper's in, uh, is he in uh, the UK? Um, I think he, I'm not sure if he is. I think he might be. I don't remember. Um, but, uh, you'll have to work that one out. Um, so real quick guys, before we wrap this one up, I want to give away one more thing. Um, I want to try to do this for the people in the live stream that are here. So if you would I'm gonna do my best to keep track here, if you guys want to have, uh, have an entry here, um, I'm going to give away this really cool tamper. Uh, this is in Europe tamper. 
uh, bamboo, and it's got this pick comes with it, and that, and I'm going to also give away with it a tin of Warhorse Bar, which I've been really enjoying. So, who, uh, so if you guys want in on the tamper and the tin, um, just chime in right now and I will write your names down real quick. We'll do that giveaway and then we'll wrap things up so we can turn things over to Steph and Skip. So chime in on the, uh, the comments that you, uh, that you're in. All right. We got Daniel. David. Cameron, Cameron, Boris, Paul, uh, B Dog. Make sure hands are going to come in fast and furious. Okay, PVD, B Dog, PVD, B Dog, Texas Piper. YP, John, Donald, Sandro, Swaggy Man, Peace Pipe, Garden. All right, Garden Piper, OWP, Juanjana, welcome again. I didn't get to say hi when you joined before. Sorry if I'm butchering your uh, pronunciation of your name, which I should be better since everybody does that to me. Yanez, Tony, Kurtz, Watch. Blue Line, All right, I think we got everybody. Let's see. Skip. Mike is in. Cane Rod. All right. Tamper J. And Gabe. Tallest. Not prepare for this many people. Sharon, all right, awesome. All right, let's see. We get the uh, five, six, Seven. All right. And we got everybody. All right. So we got uh, Daniel, St. David, let my Cameron go, Boris, Paul, PVD, B Dog, Texas Piper, YP John, Donald H, Sandro, Swaggy Man, Peace Pipe Man, Little Morgan, Garden Piper, OWP, Guanjana, Yanez, Tony, Kurt, Blue Line Pipe, Steph, Skip, Skip, Steph, Skip. Kane Rod, Tamper J, Tallest, and Sharon. I got to make sure I understand these. All right. And Armchair, Ed is in. Ed, thanks. Thanks. I didn't see you in. Thanks for joining. And thank you for the VR. Let me make sure I get Ed. Armchair. 28. All right. Anybody else? Last call. Should we get some? 
All right. Here we go. We got 28 names. Sam, I don't think I have you. Are you in, Sam? You want in or no? I'm going to put you in. Uh, I don't think I have you on here. Yes, no. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. Yep. Okay, good. Did I miss you? Make sure I didn't uh, double count you, Sam. All right. Good. I'm glad I checked. 29. All right. So I got 29 with Sam. Um, I got Boris, right? Make sure I got Boris on here. Yep, I got Boris. Okay, cool. All right. We got 29 entries. Let's do it. Here we go. One through 29. All right. And ready, set. 26. 26 is tallest Piper, Gabe. Tallest Piper, Gabe. Congrats, Gabe. You are getting a Mirup Tamper and a tin of Warhorse Bar. Awesome. I got to write that down so I don't forget. Um, Gabe. Tallest Piper. All right. Awesome. There you go. Very cool. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Texas Piper. I like I said, I appreciate it. Um, um, I love doing it. You know, these the giveaways are uh, are fun, and I know some people are kind of, you know, maybe turned off by the giveaways, which is fine. But for me, I, I don't. You know, actually, I don't do them that often. Um, 1,000 subs is a huge milestone, and I, I absolutely had no question in my mind that I needed to do something to give back. I've, I've obviously been in enough giveaways and, and had a chance to win enough stuff from the from the uh, community. So there, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give give uh, a little bit back. I mean, it really isn't much. So thank you guys, um, and uh, yeah, congrats to all the winners. Um, yeah, go find some pork roll, Mike. <laughs> I'm with you on that. It's lunchtime. Um, and, uh, don't forget to, uh, don't forget anybody else. Uh, if anybody else has a giveaway going, make sure you chime in in the chat and, uh, we got Steph and Skip coming up and, uh, virtual pipe club. And I guess, uh, Philly Piper too. If you guys haven't checked out Philly Piper's channel, Mike, um, he's got a great channel. He's a, um, big contributing member of the virtual pipe club. Um, does some fantastic reviews. So check him out. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Onion. Thanks. I didn't see you there. Thanks for joining. Um, hopefully, Onion, um, I would love to come uh, say hi to you uh, someday soon when, when all this is behind us. And uh, I'd love to go to Milan Tobacconist. I uh, was shopping there when I first started smoking a pipe. Never been. I know it's got to be an awesome shop. So lucky that you're near there. That was a good choice. All right, folks. Uh, well, we got five minutes, so I'm going to hang out here for a few more minutes if you want to hang in before uh, the next live. Um, but but thank you, guys. If anybody needs to go, thank you again for joining. Um, uh, that sounds like you're going to have a good day, OWP. We got this going a little late. We, uh, it's amazing how quick these live streams actually fly by. I know what people mean now. So, Kurt, by the way, Kurt, uh, watch my pipe. I did get an email into Mike, so I'll hopefully, if he can if he can find what I'm looking for, I'll have something to, to show to you uh, sometime soon. Um, that would be, uh, again, your fault. So, ah, no worries. No worries, Gabe. Um, congrats. Hey, Judge for All. Thanks for joining. Yeah, you know what, Steph? Um, they are a lot of fun. And I, my problem, I w actually would love to do them on a regular basis. I need to find a spot that, you know, everybody's got so many live streams. Um, you know, I guess this time's open, but, um, you know, there's there's so many going on already. It's always hard to find a spot where you're not stepping on um, someone else. But uh, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, thanks for joining, Steve. Good. Uh, have a good day. Don't work too hard. Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the nicotine. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it is a good spot, right? Um, I'll have to see if I can make this happen. So 
so many things to do. You know, uh, I'm hoping, um, quick, quick plug. I think I'm going to do, um, a first impression on this new 145 that I picked up. Um, you know, I'm always into trying. I just like trying the new stuff. So we'll see if it's any good. Um, but I do really like Sansa Pocro and I know it's got that Italian dark fired in it. So I'm, I'm really curious to see if, um, you know, CND just did like a kind of remake of Sansa Pocro for Savinelli or if it's something kind of completely unique. It'll be interesting to see. Hey, St. David. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for subbing. I'll check you out. I'll give you a sub back. Everybody go sub St. David Pipes if you haven't already. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. You got you, Onion, you man, you've been really growing your collection lately, getting some awesome pipes between those Petersons and that Dunhill, uh, along with the 320s, of course, man. You, uh, you must have a tough time choosing which pipe you want to smoke. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I appreciate you um, volunteering to do the moderating. I know it's a smaller stream, so hopefully it didn't uh, require too much work, but um, I really appreciate it. I know we all do. Hopefully, if I do get to, I'm absolutely, if travel has opened up, you, you can be sure I will be going back to London probably in early December with my uh, brother-in-law. We try to do a guy's weekend and um, we have the ability. So we're going to go and just smoke uh, cigars and pipes and go to pubs. And he's a big pub guy. So he finds all the unique old school pubs. And, and then during the day, we just hang out at James J. Fox or somewhere to you know smoke cigars and pipes. So it's uh, um, absolutely, Paul, if, if I get there, I'll make sure to let you know. I would love to connect with you, a bunch of other guys. Um, just had a uh, hummingbird buzz by me <laughs> and uh, uh, I can't wait to get back to London. I was really bummed. We couldn't go this year. Of course, we got to hook up with uh, Simon. We had a great time when we got a chance to see Simon last time. So um, yeah, we had um, a real quick before we cut this one out, Paul, um, we went to my brother-in-law, like I said, he, he, you know, I, I basically, set up the, the piping experience. He did all the pub experience and we did some pub hopping at uh, some of the famous pubs, but we found um, the, um, not the yield Cheshire cheese. That one was fun too, but there's another one um, that we went to and it was the coolest thing. Like you go down this alley, you make a left and then like there's the pub and you would never have found it if you weren't looking for it. And we went in there late at night, we had some amazing uh, drinks and then, you know, we were hungry and I had the best sandwich ever. And I'll tell you what, it was white bread with sausage and cheese, I think. And, you know, I know that's kind of probably, it. you had to be there and it was paired with the drinking, but uh, it was it was amazing pub fare, I'll tell you. Yeah, I can't remember, Paul, um, but uh, um, I will tell you too, the, uh, I did partake in the, in the jar of cracklins, which in COVID time, you know, probably wouldn't be so good, but <laughs> non-COVID, the pub, the pub jar of, of pork cracklings is hard to beat when you're, when you're pub hopping. So, yeah. It wasn't, the place I'm thinking of wasn't near the, the Cheshire cheese. Um, Cause I, I know where that is and that's kind of farther away. We were staying in uh, near, um, you know, St. James square, um, just to be closer to James J. Fox and stuff. But, um, we had, we had a great time. They, I mean, I love, I love the pub scene, um, you know, in, in, in England, it's just uh, fantastic. Well, all right, guys. I don't want to step on Steph and Skip. I know they got their live stream starting now. Um, so I'll encourage you guys to go check that out. And, um, oh, cool. The blind bag. I, didn't, I don't think we went to the blind beggar. So I definitely got to check that out, uh, Paul. I don't think we did. We might have. Honestly, we, we hit a lot of pubs. So um, thanks for joining, Yanez. And thank you guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Congrats again to the winners. 
make sure you guys reach out to me. Email will be, I'll post it after this gets posted in the bucket. Um, and actually, and on just in case, I'm going to put it here so you guys know. If you ever want to reach out to me, that's how you do it. All right. Tight lines. Happy smokes. Take care all. Thanks again. Hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend.